Well, hello! Welcome back to my channel, Jashana here, to talk about a friggin' book. The book in question is this one, per the title of this video. I wasn't sure if I was going to do an individual review of this book, but I just keep thinking about it and how much I enjoyed it and that I really cannot wait for this series to continue. So I figured I should probably do an individual review for it. And I want more people to read it. So I'm trying to put it in your faces so you pick it up. So this book is adult high fantasy. It is an entirely made up fantastical world, hence the high fantasy. It is very much an African inspired world. So the premise here is we have this, this world, this one particular land that is very much a caste system. We have our main character, Donso, who is a scholar and he is in this prestigious academy and it's giving him a little bit higher rank than he has naturally. He is betrothed to Ashime or Ashem Ashemi. I'm not entirely sure. I tried finding a pronunciation of that name, but I did not find one. I'm sure I could look a little bit further, but uh, so correct me in the comments if you know the correct pronunciation. And Ashime also doesn't naturally have like a higher ranking, uh, but her mother basically made herself very necessary to people in the higher caste, so that gave them access to the higher caste. Her mom is essentially, I mean, she is a fixer, so people can go to her to fix problems, kind of back alley, black market, you know, underground type problems. She can help people solve those. Donso kind of is fucking up here and there. Ashime is a little bit at her wit's end with him. Um, it is a, an, an advantageous, you know, betrothal for them. It's an advantageous match for both of them. Um, but he has already made a few mistakes. He was reading a sacred forbidden text and he got caught and got in a lot of trouble for that. It's information that people are not supposed to know even exists. And he just has an absolute hunger for knowledge and information. He's so curious. He just wants to know the truth of things. And that is a bit to his detriment. And then one day Danzo comes across a warrior wielding magic that is supposed to not exist. And this warrior is a person from a place that is supposed to not actually exist anymore. And things ensue from there. The city there in uh, Bassa is kind of thrown into a tumult because of this warrior's presence. Everyone is aware of it, and it is bad news bears in their eyes. So yeah, things go from there. In this book, the themes, I talked about this in my recent wrap up with it, definitely imperialism. Uh, Bassa is an imperialist, um, I, I don't know if we, I would call it a kingdom, government, country, what have you. They take over other places and kind of wipe out their culture a bit. Not a bit, they do. <laughs> There's very much xenophobia, colorism. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess it could be racism. Like, I don't know if they consider them different races in this book, but they definitely have colorism. Um, the In the caste system in Bassa, the darker complected you are, the higher caste you are, because you are considered pure Basai. You are of pure heritage, pure blood whatever. So people who are of mixed heritage and have lighter skin are considered the lower castes because they are not pure Basai. So there's definitely some xenophobia with people from the other lands. Um, they are not treated well at all. And like Dan So, who is of mixed heritage and is not, darker complected. He's dark complected, but he's not as dark as the pure Basai. Um, he's tolerated because of his skill and his knowledge and just all of that, um, but he definitely is not treated the same as the people in the higher caste. And as you may imagine, with Danso being 
so thirsty for knowledge and the truth of things, that plays a pretty big role as well in the story, the theme of truth, and there's big theme of freedom being found in the truth, and in the truth being a widely held, widely known thing. Faith in humanity is absolutely a theme here as well. We have characters uh, that you see kind of pitted against each other, but then trying to work together. And I just thought there was some really great character development, character growth, what have you, um, and conversations that they had together, and the experiences that they have together, and their shifting worldviews because of those experiences and because of the conversations they have with each other. Not having such a black and white view of the world and of humanity. <laughs> And the villain in this story, I thought was a well done villain. You, you get, it's multiple perspectives. So you get some chapters from the villain's perspective and you get to see their motivations. And even though it's like completely wild what they do based on those motivations, what their goal is, uh, they are very self-centered, very selfish, uh, very much ruthless, will just do whatever they need to do for themselves with really no regard for anyone else, <laughs> for the most part. Um, so they're very much a villain, but like I said, you get to see their motivations and kind of like understand why they feel the way they do. Can you get up there? Kuzma, what are you doing? Hi. We have a kitty interruption. Hi, Kuzma. You just wanted to come say hello to the people? <laughs> He's like, no, put me down. <laughs> but yeah, I really enjoyed um, the, the villain, I guess. I thought that they were complex, and it, I don't know, it's kind of like, for me, like a Killmonger type villain, where you don't like the execution of their plan, at all, and that's what makes them a villain, is their reaction to whatever happened to them in life, and their reaction to their circumstances is like, ooh, yeah, that made you a villain because you, you went a little too far, right? But it's like you can see the trauma they've experienced, the circumstances they are in, the world they are in, and how it treats them, and you can understand why they might have the motivation they have. And for me, that's, that's what I like to see in a villain. And that was the case in this book, for sure, for me. I tab um, various things, and it's color-coded to mean different things. Um, the hot pink is quotes to save. And honestly, I had four in here, I think, three or four. That is a fair amount for me, honestly. Most books, it's rare that I have like very many quotes to save. Books like I'll Give You the Sun, City of Girls, like my fave faves, those have pink tabs just all throughout them. Um, but fantasy books for some reason, I just don't tend to have as many. So I think it's pretty impressive that I had several. And I did also have a couple of emotional moments in this uh, where I was, I was impacted a bit. I will read these quotes in just a second. I wanna get into a couple of spoilery things now. So I'll put timestamps uh, for this portion so you can jump ahead if you would like. So I'm really curious with the next book, what is gonna happen to the people? Oh, I can't remember the name now of um, when Li Long and Don So went to the other land. What was it, what's it called? It's in the map, let me double check. Wudasha. Those people. I'm so curious what the fuck is gonna have happen to them. I mean, are they all wiped out? Because they're like exodus from their land or their city, their village, and they were going to the mines. But then like along the way, so many of them went back and I'm just like, that can't be good. Oh my God, you're all gonna have died and be wiped out. And I really hope they weren't. Cause that's like fucking depressing. Like a whole people just gone and their whole culture just gone. 
And I just really, really hope that that is not what happened. Oh, the magic in this. I also really enjoyed the magic system. I don't know, I'm there, I feel like there are so many people, <laughs> so many readers and booktubers that are just way more, I don't know, critical than I am of these types of things. I thought that it made sense. I, I don't know, I don't like sit here and analyze the magic system. That's just not the type of reader I am. Like, like I mean, obviously sometimes it's, it's clear that like, oh, this kind of doesn't make sense or this is really like low magic, you know, and it's like, you just kind of threw it in there and I don't really mind if that's the case. But other times, I don't know, I just, I don't, I don't get that into analyzing it. But in this one, the magic system is based off of these stones or these like types of stones or types of metal and things like that. And you have to know how to work it so they're called uh, Iber workers and things like that. And what was the other name? Now I can't remember. I should have fucking taken notes. Yeah, Iber worker, right? That's the only name they are. But yeah, it's a, it's a type of stone and there's different colors of it and it can do different things based on that. And this magic isn't supposed to exist anymore. It's basically like myth and legend uh, at this point. There were a lot of things that both Donso leaving like caused to happen and then also Ashime taking over the city and just causing chaos. She just like doesn't fucking care. She is wreaking havoc and doesn't care. And that's why I was saying like she's so self-centered. She just wanted to be in power, but then she's just not helping the people. She's not actually taking care of the people. She's just like, oh, I'm in power now. Deal with your shit, I guess. And then she just leaves the city. I don't know how long she's gonna be gone, if she's gonna keep hunting them. But it was just, like, she just left a wake of chaos. And it was like, girl, did you not have a better plan? Hello? But I think that's part of her plan. She just doesn't care. She just wanted to be in power and she didn't want to be in the lower caste. She didn't want to have to be reliant upon her mother's reputation or Donso's reputation. And she just wanted to run shit based on her and her alone. And she succeeded, but then she kind of isn't, she's not being responsible, you know? But that's what makes her a villain, right? And yeah, Donso and Leelong, like I said, with the Wudasha, Wudusha, what did I say? Now I already forgot. Wudasha, I was right the first time. Jeez, Deshana. Um, with those people, like they just wreaked havoc on them. And that was kind of a theme too. And at one point, Zach, Zach said that to uh, Donso, which I did think was a slightly unfair of him because like, Zach was saying, you didn't even ask me. You made me come. A decision that will change my whole life. And you didn't even consider the weight of that sacrifice for me. You didn't wonder, how can I protect Zach, who doesn't have the same privileges as me? You made me come because you think me dispensable. And I do think that Donso was a little bit, like, I don't know. He, he, I don't think he put enough importance on focusing on how Zach felt. I don't think he was, I guess, like took enough care with explaining his thought process to Zach and checking in with Zach to see how he feels and how he's doing. But at the same time, he made it very clear that he thought Zach needed to come and Zach did need to come because if he stayed, he would absolutely have been executed. 1000%. He would have been potentially tortured by Ashime and that whole thing or at the very least would have been executed by the government because they thought he attacked her, which is like a mortal, you know, sin, a horrible crime. So it's like, dude, you couldn't have stayed. I mean, you could have stayed, but that would have been very stupid. And that's what Donzo was saying. Like, you have to come with me because if you stay, you're gonna die. And then Zach being like, you didn't even ask me. You just didn't even care what it would mean for me. Like, dude, if you would have stayed, you would be dead. I'm confused how you're mad at Donso for making you come. You really, like, 
Your other option was death, absolute certain, certain death. With this option, you at least have a chance of surviving, you know? I don't know, I just really liked it. I really liked the ending too. It was sort of a cliffhanger, but like things were wrapped up. And I'm just, I'm so excited for the next one. It comes out next year. I don't know exactly when. The next one is called Warrior of the Wind. But yeah, it just says publish 2022. So next year sometime, hopefully early next year. Uh, I will definitely be pre-ordering that one as well. Um, yeah, I gave this five stars. I just really enjoyed it. I read through it very quickly for the size of book that it is, especially for me. Um, it's about 450-ish pages long and it's like a pretty big, you know, floppy paperback. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. I really liked these characters. Um, I really enjoyed Donso's interactions with Lee Long. And oh yeah, I'll read those quotes now. I read one of them in the recent wrap up and I won't give context. So there's no like, you know, big spoilers or whatever. Two characters talking and one says, why do you trust in the good of the world so much? Haven't you been told enough lies? The other one says, I have but I still believe there is freedom to be found in truth, for myself at least, and I can't find it if I'm always searching for the lie. And oh, I love that. This is another one that I enjoyed, someone saying, this is kind of like a political conversation. There are revolutionaries, rebels within the city that want things to change, and within that organization, there are there's some infighting, there's people with different ideologies and different ideas of how they should go about this. And one of them is saying, um, I would have thought from blah, 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 you would understand these necessary evils better, but here you are putting us in this position once again. And the other person says, there is no such thing as a necessary evil. There is only evil. And I just really, really liked that line. This one. Don't be too hard on yourself. You did what you believed was right. This continent failed him, not you. Your only crime was believing in the systems it made. And maybe that's not really a crime, you know? The world needs at least one person to harbor a little belief, a little trust in things, or else what a horrible, horrible place it'll be. And that's, again, coming from this character who is very nihilistic, pessimistic, everybody sucks. And like, you're an idiot for being so optimistic and whatever. And then they say, perhaps harboring just a little bit of faith, a little bit of trust, even when you're unsure, maybe that's how we make change. Change, they echoed, pensive. Yes, change, like destroying every lie. That's where the power to do so rests, isn't it? And maybe if we keep enough faith with others, Together we become powerful enough to force everyone to look, to see the blood buried beneath this land. And true freedom is truth, isn't it? And, ah, oh, I just love that so much. That last bit there, especially. We force everyone to look to see the blood buried beneath this land. And true freedom is truth, isn't it? Like they're talking about learning the actual truth of this land and making that knowledge available to everyone. And that like that is part of this effort toward freedom. In order to have true freedom, everyone needs to know the fucking truth about what happened here and about what this country has done, about what this government has done, what this leadership has done, and the blood buried beneath the land. And if that isn't true, I don't know what. And, you know, obviously that's, touching on a lot of real life colonialism, imperialism, and the various problems that came with that, that come with that still to this day, you know? And I just think that is very, very true. And it made me think of the recent uh, nonfiction I read, The Color of Law, and that's like kind of the message at the end of that book is, these problems cannot be fixed until everyone is aware of the truth of this problem until everyone will admit that this is what happened and this is the truth and now we can do something about it. But until people just take that step to admit the truth and to know the truth and to believe the truth, 
there won't be any change. There can't be because the change would need to be so drastic and there won't be drastic change unless people believe this truth. And it just like harkened back to that for me. I was like, oh my God, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> so yeah, highly recommend this great book. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope that if you pick it up, you will also enjoy it, especially if you're picking it up based on my recommendation. It's always nerve wracking. Like, oh God, I loved it. But like, what if you fucking hate it? Ugh. But yeah, I definitely think it's worth checking out. And I'm so excited for future installments of this series and really anything else that Suyi Davies Okungbawa puts out. Hopefully there will be many, many more books to come from this author. Well, that is all. If you have read this book, please let me know what your thoughts were down below. If you horribly disagreed with me, please be kind. <laughs> if you just stopped by to say hello and make your presence known, go ahead and leave a little emoji. As always, thank you so much for your time. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.